we're tasked with finding all positive integer pairs n and p, where p is a prime, that satisfy this beautiful equation from the 1999 International Math Olympiad. It's a classic that perfectly marries factorials and exponents. The condition that p is a prime is not just a detail, it's the key that unlocks our entire toolbox of number theory theorems. Whenever you see a prime p in the term p1 factorial, a giant bell should go off in your head. Wilson's theorem. Wilson's theorem states that for any prime number p, p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1, modulo p. Let's look at the right-hand side of our equation in light of this theorem. Applying Wilson's theorem, we see that the entire right-hand side is congruent to 0 modulo p. In other words, it's a multiple of p. This means p is a divisor of p1 factorial plus 1. This is a crucial first step. Now let's bring the left-hand side into the picture and see what happens when we look at the whole equation modulo p. Since the two sides are equal, the left side must also be congruent to 0 modulo p. Fermat's little theorem states that n to the p1 is congruent to 1 mod p, but it comes with a critical condition. This only holds if p does not divide n. Let's assume for a moment that p does not divide n. Then we'd have a contradiction. By Fermat's little theorem, the left side is 1, but we already know from the right side that it must be 0. This implies 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, which is impossible. The only way to resolve this contradiction is to conclude that the condition for Fermat's little theorem does not apply. p must divide n. We've made a huge breakthrough. Since p divides n, we know n must be a multiple of p. Let's test some small prime values for p to see what happens. Let's start with the smallest prime, p equals 2. This simplifies to n to the first power equals 1 factorial plus 1. Evaluating the factorial gives us n equals 1 plus 1, which gives n equals 2. Does this satisfy our condition that p divides n? Yes, 2 divides 2. So we have found our first solution, n equals 2, p equals 2. Now let's try the next prime, p equals 3. The equation becomes n squared equals 2 factorial plus 1. Evaluating the factorial gives us n squared equals 2 plus 1. This simplifies to n squared equals 3, which has no integer solution for n. What about p equals 5? We get n to the fourth equals 4 factorial plus 1. 4 factorial is 24, so n to the fourth is 24 plus 1. This simplifies to n to the fourth equals 25. Taking the square root, n squared must be 5, which again has no integer solution. It seems we're not finding any more solutions. Our investigation suggests that 2.2 might be the only solution. To prove this, we need to show that for larger primes, the equation can never hold. We'll do this by comparing the size of the two sides. Let's consider any prime PE greater than or equal to 3. Since P divides N and N is a positive integer, the smallest possible value for N is P itself. Let's analyze the simplest case first, where N is exactly equal to P. Our equation becomes P to the power of P1 equals P1 factorial plus 1. We want to show this is impossible for P greater than or equal to 3. The left side is a product of p1 terms, where every single term is p. The factorial on the right side is also a product of p1 terms, but they are 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to p1. When we compare them term by term, for any prime p of 3 or more, p is strictly greater than every single number in the factorial's product. Therefore, the product on the left must be strictly greater than the product on the right. Since these are all integers, if p to the p1 is strictly greater than the factorial, it must be at least 1 greater. 
This means equality in our original equation is impossible for p greater than or equal to 3. Our algebraic proof is confirmed by this graph. The blue exponential curve skyrockets past the red factorial curve right after p per 2, showing they can never be equal again. Now what if n is a larger multiple of p, like 2p, 3p, and so on? Let's consider n being greater than or equal to 2p. Since n is at least 2p, n to the p1 must be at least 2p to the p1. Using exponent rules, we can distribute the power. For any p of 3 or more, the factor 2 to the p1 is greater than 1, so this term is strictly larger than p to the p1. And we just proved in our first case that this is larger than the right side of our equation. Chaining these inequalities together proves that for any p p equal to 3 or more, the left side of the equation is always strictly greater than the right side. No solutions can exist. Let's put all our pieces together. First, our initial test of p equals 2 yielded the unique solution pair, 2, 2. Second, we used an inequality argument to prove that for any prime p of 3 or greater, no solution can possibly exist. Therefore, after all that work, this complex-looking equation has only one simple solution. Thank you for joining this exploration of a classic IMO problem. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more mathematical content. See you next time.